The Pilot Kakuno range of fountain pens is targeted at beginners and students who are just picking up the use of fountain pens. Taking a look at the pens themselves, um, obviously they come in different colors. I have, happen to have the clear demonstrator version down here, which I think it looks very attractive. And I also have the pink uh, with the white barrel. So taking a look at the the parts of the pen, you have the cap with um, the finial area or the top area has three holes. Um, it does have a little sleeve, plastic sleeve, uh, internal sleeve. However, just be aware that the cap uh, will leak um, air as well as water out um, from the top from these three holes. I'm not sure in the long run if you leave the pen inked up whether or not the feed will dry out. Uh, in my case, it hasn't. So on the cap itself, it says Pilot Kakuno, and it has the cap itself has this little uh, cap stop, which prevents the pen from uh, sliding off the table should it decide to kind of run away on its own. Uh, on the other side of the, the pen, on the other end of the pen, you have the end of the barrel, which says down here, Pilot uh, Japan. And it also has two holes down here. Apparently, the, all these holes are to make this pen safe for children to use without um, them choking on, on bits and pieces of the pen. Um, the actual body of the pen, if you'll notice, it actually has these hexagonal um, sides to them. So it's six-sided. The cap itself is very light. So looking at the rest of the pen, you have the barrel area down here, which is made totally of plastic, plastic threads internally as well. As mentioned earlier on, you can see those holes uh, at, the, at the bottom of the barrel. And first interesting thing about this pen, you, if, if you've been um, using other pilot pens uh, before, like for example, the Con uh, Custom 74, you will notice that a Con 70, which is probably the largest converter which Pilot has, uh, would fit into the, the body of this pen, which is kind of an interesting thing because uh, Con 70 won't, won't actually fit in a Metropolitan, for example, or even a Plumix or any other of the lower end Pilot uh, pens. The other parts of the pen are actually the, the grip area or this, this section down here. Um, I like the way it's designed. It has triangular uh, sides to that to it that allow you to hold the pen securely when you're writing. It's long enough so that and thick enough so that you can actually hold uh, closer to the nib or further back from the nib, depending on your preference. The nib itself has very uh, kind of uh, cute cartoon graphics. In this case, the extra fine has a face with uh, two. To, with the tongue sticking out. On the other side, you see the feet is a very typical pilot feet. I like the fact as well that uh, this area of the pen is transparent. Uh, it really helps when, for example, if, when you're cleaning out the pen, you can actually see where are the residual or dried out parts of the, of the feet that you need to rinse off. Incidentally, the the nib from the Metropolitan or the Cocoon can be easily pulled out and put into the Kakuno. Um, just to kind of, uh, since I have it here, you can kind of take a look at the two uh, designs of the nib. They look identical down here. I prefer the grip area of the Kakuno, you know, based on what I mentioned earlier on. Um, to to the grip area of the of the metropolitan slash cocoon. So let's do a little bit of writing. I'm gonna bring my notepad up here. So this is the extra fine. And first impressions is you know, the nib is not hard, 
right? There's actually uh, quite a nice bounce to it. And um, it's not perfectly smooth. It has a little bit of feedback, which I also appreciate. So no line variation or anything, or maybe a little bit if you really push it. Uh, in terms of wetness, it's moderately wet. I wouldn't say it's a gusher, but uh, good enough. And fits appropriately uh, to the paper that you know, Pilot probably thinks that the users of this pen would use, which is, it would probably fit in well with normal paper, not, not fountain pen friendly paper. Since I have the fine down here, I can show you what um, line width would look like. I have this inked up with Sailor Blue Black. So the fine uh, feels stiffer in a way and you can't really push it very much, right? Uh, but you should, I mean, if you have a Metropolitan already, you should be familiar with how this nib kind of works. And a good thing about it is that you can switch around, switch the nibs around. You kind of play with, for example, if you have a Plumix or Pluminix, um, again, a Metropolitan, you can switch those, those three brands of nibs around just by pulling out uh, the feed mechanism from the pen. I also have other some other pens down here. So bringing back the, the Cocoon slash Metropolitan to kind of give you an idea of the length of the Cocoono. I have a Lamy Safari down here. So they're all quite comparable, right? Um, I didn't really speak about this, but uh, balance wise it is a very well balanced pen like nearly you know perfect 50 50 weight distribution i don't um, if you post the pen i don't think it would affect the balance that much because the cap is very very light and i'm just going to show you what the, the pens look like on un, unposted to kind of give you an idea of their lengths their respective lengths so the Safari is just hair bit, maybe about five, five to 10 millimeters longer than the Kakuna, but not very much. You can see where the inspiration that Pilot, uh, that Pilot got when designing this pen, right? You still get the facets down here that the Safari has and so on, but it, it is its own pen, right? Don't get me wrong. Another pen which uh, the Kukuno gets compared to quite a lot. It's actually the Caveco Pakeo. Uh, that pen costs a little bit more than the Kukuno. Kukuno costs about, like I mentioned earlier on, it's about the $12 US mark, depending where you buy it. The Pakeo, probably it's three or $4 more. Um, however, the design of that pen and this pen is also fairly similar. So to kind of close off, the, the quick look. Um, another thing which I didn't mention is uh, the pen obviously didn't come with Con 70 that I showed earlier on or the Con 40. It comes with a cartridge, right? So you, you have to add the converter uh, to the pen. So my thoughts are it's, this is pretty much the ideal starter pen if you're already a pilot or you bought into the pilot ecosystem of pens. Uh, you can switch the converters around. You can take uh, the converter from the very high-end custom uh, range of pens and put them into this pen. Um, you can 
switch the nips around like I mentioned earlier on between the steel nipped pilot pens so it has quite a lot of flexibility it writes well very consistent feels comfortable in the hand um, so lots of good points going for this question is would I buy more than one right if I if I already had a Kakuno um, probably I'll just buy one to kind of test out whether whether or not I liked it I might buy one for the purpose of you know just putting it um, in, in a bag for traveling um, that type of purpose whether or not I'll buy many of them and collect the colors I'm probably not one of those people who would do that um, but if you are you know you know go ahead it makes makes a good sense that way as well so pilot that's the pilot Kakuno very nice beginner entry-level pen from pilot I uh, hope you like this uh, very brief quick look let me know what you think of the pen if you have um, the Pakeo I'll be particularly interested in your thoughts of that pen versus this pen um, so please write them in the comments below um, please give me a like if you like this video uh, like I mentioned give me your comments and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye